What's going on everybody? It is David Palmer, the Leo King, and this is my show, Uncut Astrology, where I take the weekly astrology report and I make it raw, I make it real, and I take off the mask and give you the astrology for the week of September 30th through October the 6th or 7th of 2015. I like to do it Wednesday to Wednesday, middle to middle. And I just want to say, wow, September. September that you will remember. How much energy was that? How much change was that? Wow. We have made it through a lot of energy. And October is all about exploring where it's going to go. I did do a big report on October, which I will put up on my website on October 1st if you want to download about the future of all of October if you want to look deep into the transits and what's going on and so forth. But I got to say this about this week before we go into all the specifics of the astrology. With so much energy that's happened and with a Mercury retrograde still happening, it does still put us in a very weird purgatory position, I like to call it. Because there's a lot to weigh out, there's a lot to think about, and I also believe personally as an astrologer that the eclipse season doesn't end until the next new moon without an eclipse, which is coming up in a couple weeks. So literally I believe when we do have this new moon coming in Libra, I do believe that that will you know, complete the eclipse cycle. Um, and especially once the nodes are going to switch into Virgo and Pisces in October in the next couple weeks, yes, this is when we are completely out of this magical Libra airy story. And what is that? Do you feel alone? Where's the relationships in your life? Is this the right relationship you're in? Who are you? Is this what you want to do? Is this your path? We want adventure. We have Saturn and Sagittarius now. We want to get out of our repetitive patterns. I always believe um, Saturn and Sagittarius, or anytime you see Saturn in the ninth house, you know, it is uh, a client or a personality or a soul that likes to, you know, constantly be out there and exploring and doing new things and doesn't really know how to. You know, Saturn in the third house can be like sticking around the neighbors a lot, sticking around the same town a lot, sticking around in the same kind of energy, the same environment. And I think we're sick of our environments, believe it or not. I think a lot of us are ready to break open. But this purgatory I talk about is Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde to me is, even though it is the smallest planet, and it is a major transit, it is the major transit of this week because there is not much else happening in the astrology. I'm going to talk about it a couple other transits that are kind of big, but from what we've been going through with eclipses and big oppositions between Jupiter and Neptune and all these big changes that we've been going through, it's like, wow, this week is actually relatively low on the energy scale, um, but it's because we're weighing out a lot. It's because, to me, we're in a hermetic world. Mercury, to me represents communication. It represents the understanding, our thought processes. And I believe that, you know, astrology is hermetic. And I believe that once Mercury is always direct and why Mercury retrogrades are such a big deal is because Mercury and, and the hermetic art is not online fully yet. Look at, um, you know, the way that things are happening in the world. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I'm recording this as, you know, Russia's bombing Syria and everybody's like, well, what's going on and who's this and should I, did I communicate right to that? I've had the worst technology problems I've ever had in my life on a Mercury retrograde. This one, believe it or not, we're at a time where everything is a little bit all over the place and with a mutable cross this week with the moon that will come into Gemini, oh, I'm telling you, as we come into this, you know, energy, it's going to get really crazy. Literally, Thursday, Friday, with the moon in Gemini, it's going to square all this mutable energy, oppose Saturn in Sagittarius, square Neptune in Chiron and Pisces, square Mars in Jupiter in Virgo. There's going to be energy all over the place. And so, it's not that it's, you know, extreme energy. Just, I think that we're just scattered. We've, we've got these new doors to open up. We could feel alone, and we're trying to find connection, and we're trying to find happiness and harmony 
and everything's all over the place and we're trying to shuffle the pieces together get the pieces it's almost like the puzzle pieces have you know you were doing a puzzle with grandma and like the table got flown off or you know a hurricane came and blew in and you got to find all the pieces or your glasses broke and you got to find it all you know and i think that's kind of what's going on because the sun and mercury conjuncted um on wednesday uh, on the 30th and they quincunxed neptune that is the glasses fogging up and not knowing and the balance off and having to adjust our, our understanding of our life. And we could feel like, oh God, do I need to change this? Do I need to do this? You know, all this energy of Aries that it brought up in the, the, the full moon lunar eclipse was like, well, what do I need to change? What do I need to do? I need to do something. Mercury's retrograding still. You know, we don't know. We don't know. Use this week to realize with a mutable cross and, and especially a moon in Gemini, there's going to be a lot of facts that come in weird areas. And so our minds are going to get lots of answers, lots of possibilities. This is also going to be the first time that we're going to see the moon oppose Saturn in Sagittarius since it's been, I think, like four months, right, since that happened. And this one's going to be now with all this energy in Virgo and with Jupiter in Virgo. So this is about extreme amounts of information overload. And when you have a Mercury retrograde, it's all over the place. It's, it's, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to get there. This seems like a possibility. That seems like a possibility. And the truth of this week is we are at a place of endless possibilities, endless amounts of information that we can't decipher. Plus, when you add that to the sun that's going to square Pluto by the beginning of next week, we have to come into this place where it's like, wow, I know I got to make a change. I know I need to find my connection. I might have fears of which commitment to make, but I know I've got to start figuring this out. And Mercury will still be retrograding during that Sun-Pluto square. This is a very interesting time because I think once we finally hit October 9th, we're going to really feel okay. You know, we're going to feel like we've got all the information, we're ready to go forward. Look in this, well, you know, it's kind of hard to see it now, but Venus is now the morning star, and that's where Jupiter is, and that's where Mars is. So you have to get up really early in the morning to see that stuff, because now the sun is in front of it. So we don't see it during the day. You know, we don't see it at the evening time. We see it early in the morning. And mm, October is going to have Jupiter, Venus, and Mars come into a conjunction, and the North Node's coming into Virgo. And so this is an overload of energy, an extreme amount of energy. Plus, I did want to add this to a note. I'm not one to get into all this stuff, but Mars has not had this much of a pump up in a long time. For Mars to have Jupiter, Venus conjuncted again. Mars has been having Venus conjuncted for the third time this year. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Mars rules war. Mars rules, you know, our identity. It rules our strength. You know, I don't want to predict war or anything like that. But we are coming into a time where aggression and strength and a purity of that is having to come. And we need to watch our actions. And, and, and I think that the reason why this is a weird moment in our lives this week is because October is going to be a lot of energy. Different than September, more towards opportunities to move into, opposed to clearings that I think that September brought us. Um, and this week, it's just all about weighing out all those options and realizing that this might not be it. That idea that you have that you think maybe will be it is probably not going to be it. I'm just going to be honest. And that maybe you just need to calm down this week. We very rarely get, especially in the astrology of the last three, four, five, well, we could go all the way back to 2008 when Pluto entered Capricorn. It's been a wild ride. And this week offers us a little bit of a, of a chill ride. I mean, even though there is, I mean, Sun square Pluto is an intense transit and a Mercury retrograde is intense and a mutable cross is intense. Good thing it's with a moon though. So it, the moon only triggers it for a, a day and a half and then it's gone. It's like, whoa, what was that? What was all that crazy stuff that I thought this could be? And, what, and this just flew into my life and then it blew out? This is where things fly in and fly out. 
I want to just let you know, relax. Patience. Especially in the political arena, you know, all these data and numbers and who this is who's leading and that's who's leading. I wouldn't even pay attention to any of that because this is the worst time on earth to even pay attention to who's this and who's that because nobody knows anything. Nobody knows what, none of the numbers are real, none of the numbers are right. We're, we're at a time where everything is just like, well, it could be this, it could be that, it should be this, or maybe, I don't know. And that sun square Pluto, it wants to know. And it can't know fully. And I think that that could create massive frustration and massive control issues and massive, you know, unwanted changes that you force yourself into that you don't need to. Gosh, I've been waiting, you know, I do these uncuts and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get off until I get the major message out. That's the major message. You do not need to force change upon yourself to change your life this week without knowing everything. Because the changes that you try to force yourself on this week are not going to be the answer of what you're looking for. Yes, we want to get out of old environments. Yes, we want to explore. But there is patience that we're learning with Saturn and Sagittarius. And there is patience on the board when you have a Mercury retrograde. And one that officially, when it stops, will stop on the North Node next week. So. Thank you so much for supporting me. Get my October horoscope if you want uh, to find out that. I also did a Saturn and Sagittarius video if you want to go deeper into what I believe the next two years of Saturn and Sagittarius is. It's a 16 to 17 minute video and at the end I do about a two to three minute version of your sun sign and you could pick based off your sun sign on my website as well. And if you want to get my daily videos every day, you can get that at inclusiveastrology.com or you can get it on my apps, Apple and Android type in the Leo King. Or if you just want to go to the premium website where you can watch the videos, leoking.lookstack.com. Thanks so much for all your support, everybody. I'm sending you a lot of love, a lot of light, and I'm hoping that you have a, a, a wonderful journey through this as we search for relationships, we search for connections in our life with a lot to weigh out and enjoy the adventure and don't force yourself to change anything. Just kind of weigh out all these exciting, and random new things that come into our life as we're in a minor purgatory. Thanks so much and I will see you on the next Uncut.